Hello everyone, I'm Forecaster Jack Sillen here with the Tropical Weather Update discussion video for Monday, August 24th, 2020. Um, this update, of course, will be busy um, because we have plenty of tropical activity out in the Atlantic. Um, it's important to note that I'm not going to cover all of the nuances of the forecast for uh, Marco and Laura in this video because that would make for a very long video. So uh, forthcoming blog discussions this afternoon will contain more detailed discussion of each storm, um, especially Laura, because Marco is pretty much um, done now. You can see it sort of fizzling out over the northern Gulf of Mexico. Um, it is uh, decoupled, the low-level circulation moving northwest into Louisiana, the mid-level circulation moving northeast into Florida. Um, so watch out for gusty winds, heavy rain, threat for water spouts and tornadoes here um, along the central Gulf Coast today. But uh, other than that, Marco is pretty much um, done. The bigger threat, uh, much bigger threat, is uh, down here in the Caribbean with um, Tropical Storm Laura. Um, I'll also be covering a couple of other disturbances to watch uh, later in the week. So um, with that in mind, um, let's start taking a little bit of a brief look at Laura. Um, its uh, satellite appearance is you know, perhaps not the most um, stunning uh, this afternoon. Uh, you can see that it's you know producing um, a good amount of uh, deep convection near the core of the storm um, right there. The um, large band of intense convection that we saw really dominate the satellite appearance of the system last night and early this morning is now fading and the convection near the center is taking over. You'll notice that there's not a whole lot of convection off to the north of the center. That's because there is a little bit of northerly shear being imparted on the storm. So. Um, you know, back a couple of days ago, we talked about how the low-level steering flow really wants to push um, Laura off to the northwest, uh, um, and the mid-level steering flow, or the upper-level steering flow, wants to push it off to the basically due west. And there's a you know that difference, right, is a change in wind direction with height. And even though it's subtle, it's putting a little bit of northerly pressure on Laura. So that's why we're seeing a little bit of a, a, a lighter northern half. Obviously, that's great news for Cuba. Now, no longer seeing um, really the worst of the weather associated with um, Laura. Uh, Cayman Islands um, definitely getting uh, some substantial impacts here. We saw some um, substantial impacts also in Jamaica earlier this morning. Um, the storm will be continuing off to the west-northwest, aiming for the far northwestern tip of Cuba here by tonight. Um, it should uh, remain more or less in steady state, shouldn't be intensifying all that much today given this light northerly shear, the continued interaction with Cuba. Um, we'll see its organization probably remain um, somewhat like this, right, where we have this semi-disorganized convective activity near the center, um, plenty of convection out um, you know, in the edges of the storm, perhaps a little bit less so on the northern side than the southern side. That'll probably continue until tomorrow. So uh, just because you see this and it doesn't look like a classic buzzsaw, I, um, you know, perfectly symmetrical storm, so on and so forth, doesn't mean it's not dangerous and doesn't mean it's not um, still poised to rapidly intensify in the Gulf of Mexico. That is the forecast um, pretty much um, for Laura. And moving into the Gulf of Mexico, it'll have a very favorable environment. Um, you see this big ridge of upper level high pressure. That'll keep the shear to a minimum. Again, that subtle northerly shear um, is influencing the system a little bit while it's down near Cuba, but that will probably lessen as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. And with um, extremely warm waters, uh, this favorable divergent upper level outflow, um, no dry air really to be worried about. Um, Laura will shouldn't have much of a problem with that uh, shear. Um, and then the remaining question is basically, um, you know, does it wobble a little bit north into Louisiana or does it wobble a little bit west into Texas? And right now, um, based on uh, convective trends, observational trends, latest forecast model guidance, I'm still inclined to favor that more, that track a little bit more to the west towards Texas. Still too early to say whether that would be um, you know, far eastern Texas, east of Houston, whether that would be the Houston Galveston area, whether that might be farther south, closer to Corpus Christi, that whole area really should be watching Laura very closely and preparing for impacts from a major hurricane um, because it is um, possible, uh, if not even likely, that uh, Laura will make landfall as a major hurricane. But even if it doesn't, even if it stays at category two intensity, it's still going to cause major problems for wind, storm surge, um, freshwater flooding, so on and so forth. Um, so after Laura um, moves inland, it will turn to the north uh, ahead of this upper level trough over the plains. Um, of course, it will be weakening over land. As we would expect, a tropical system loses access to its source of energy over land. 
Um, one interesting note is that by the time it uh, emerges off the mid-Atlantic coast, it will probably be non-tropical, but it will be interacting favorably with these two jet streaks, one of which diving, uh, is diving southeast uh, um, through the Great Lakes, the other which is lifting to the northeast over Atlantic Canada. And this is a good spot if you're a, a storm system to be in relative to these jet streaks. So the ECMWF model actually forecasting the system to intensify a bit um, as it's moving over the far northern edge of the Gulf Stream. So if you're in Nova Scotia or Newfoundland, um, this is something to keep an eye on. Um, Laura may cause some uh, significant wind and rain even if it's no longer a tropical system at that point. Um, a pretty impressive storm here depicted by the ECMWF. That said, this scenario is dependent on a pretty delicate interaction between the remnant circulation of Laura and these upper level um, features that are associated with um, non-tropical processes with the jet stream. So it's not a foregone conclusion that this interaction is gonna be favorable for Laura, but in the event that it is, um, we could see some wind and rain impacts in Atlantic Canada. Um, Cape Cod may also get grazed by that, but uh, you know at least cur most current forecasts show Laura moving off to the south of Cape Cod. So uh, even, uh, again, points farther west along the track, not really a huge wind threat from the storm uh, once, you move, once you move inland from the Gulf Coast, but there will be heavy rain. There will be some severe weather, uh, tornadoes especially, associated with um, the circulation of Laura. So uh, even if you're well away from the coastline, you should be uh, following the storm carefully, prepared for some flooding impacts. Um, so on and so forth. So what's next after Laura? Well, um, there are two uh, features to watch in the Atlantic by the time we get to this weekend. The first of which is in the Gulf of Mexico. Again, I know. Um, this tropical wave here, you can see it's um, going to spin up out of the monsoon trough down here, the intertropical convergence zone um, south of Nicaragua. It's going to move uh, off to the northwest, um, steered around that same upper level high that's pushing Laura off to the north. Um, and then it'll emerge into the Gulf of Mexico um, on Sat Friday or Saturday. Now, whether this develops into a tropical storm or not is unclear. Um, the ECMWF currently doesn't depict uh, much of a circulation forming in the low levels. You can see that sort of weak um, signature there um, moving through the Bay of Campeche uh, towards far southern Texas. But hey, this is a tropical wave. It's moving through the Gulf of Mexico. It'll have a fairly favorable environment. Um, notice there's not much wind shear here, a little bit of that uh, divergent upper level circulation. Um, not really a whole lot in the way of dry air, perhaps a little bit right behind the system. Um, so, and of course there's plenty of warm water. So this is a system we have to watch. It's not something that you should be uh, worried about. It's not something that is, you know, has a good shot probably at rapidly intensifying, but uh, even if you get a quote-unquote weak tropical storm to drift north uh, towards Texas this weekend, if this area is where uh, Laura ends up making landfall, that could cause some problems. So keep a half an eye out for potential tropical development down in the Bay of Campeche um, later this week. The next system to watch um, will emerge off of Africa um, on Wednesday afternoon. Um, so that's this wave right here. Um, it'll drift across the Atlantic um, this weekend, potentially slowly uh, organizing into a tropical storm um, or a tropical depression. Uh, this is what the ECMWF is currently showing, this development into a tropical depression by next week. Um, of course, any potential, potential U.S. impacts from this would not be for another two weeks or so. So it's definitely not nothing to worry about at the moment, but it is something to keep an eye on. Still will probably struggle with this um, batch of dry air off to its north. Um, and then as it approaches the uh, Lester Antilles, um, there's yet another one of these potential vorticity streamers we've talked about all season pushing southwesterly shear towards the storm. So at the moment, no indications that this is going to be a huge um, problem. It'll definitely have some hurdles to overcome um, before it's something that we have to start worrying about, but it is something to keep an eye on um, and very well could burn through another name uh, on the list. So. Uh, that brings us through to next week. Um, if this storm ends up developing, obviously you'll hear plenty about it um, on the blog in, in next week's discussion video, so on and so forth. So um, that's it for the discussion of specific um, events. Um, the only other thing to mention, of course, is our look at the uh, longer term um, sort of favorable or unfavorable pattern. And unfortunately, this is a pattern that's very favorable for tropical cyclones in the Atlantic. You see the big uh, area of upward motion moving over Africa and the Indian Ocean. That'll get our wave train juiced up 
And then that zone between the upward motion and the downward motion, which is right over the Atlantic Basin, is where shear is lower uh, on average. Um, so uh, this is a favorable environment for Atlantic hurricane activity to continue into September. Of course, this is our peak season. We're still a couple weeks away from peak season, which arrives uh, on September 10th. Uh, this is the day that, climatologically speaking, we have the most um, hurricane tropical storm activity. So uh, plenty um, of hurricane season left to go here. And unfortunately, it looks like the um, pace, uh, quick pace of activity here is going to continue uh, heading through September. So that's it for me for now. Um, remember, I'll have another live stream event at 5.30 on our Periscope page. Um, so tune into that for all the latest on Laura. Uh, I'll have a blog update this afternoon as well, explaining in detail what's happening with Laura. Um, and of course, as always, um, more frequent updates can be found on Twitter at weather.us and at Jackson. All right, that's it for me for now. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.